Hi, so today we are looking at chapter 13, which is coordination and response. So we have a nervous system, right? And this nervous system sends information around in our bodies. But what makes up our nervous system? Well, it's actually neurons, which is nerve cells. Let's take a look at what they look like. So let's take a look at the anatomy of a neuron. Here we can see a color-coded uh, diagram that shows the different regions of a neuron. So the yellow, we have our dendrites. Then the blue area is our cell body. And here we have our axon. And at the end of the axons, we've got the telodendria, which contains the synaptic terminals. So let's take a look at a little bit more information on the big diagram here. Here we can see again our dendritic branches. Um, notice that a neuron contains a nucleus. It also contains a certain other organelles such as our Golgi apparatus and for example mitochondria. Um, this section here is called the axon hillock and it separates the cell body from the axon which is this long branching section over here. At the end of the axon we've got our telodendria which have synaptic terminals. So nerve impulses get passed on from neuron to neuron but how does a nerve impulse travel through the neuron? Well it travels through the cell body then it goes through the axon and then it passes on to the next neuron. That is how our body sends information or signals through electrical currents or electrical signals. Now the axons are often covered with a myelin sheath and you can think of myelin as being like the outer rubber coating of a wire. So on the inside you have your uh, metal which is what uh, transmits the electrical current but then you've got this insulation layer the rubber that you see when you hold a piece of wire in your hand and that is similar to myelin which is made up of fat and proteins and this uh, sheaths the axons and allows the signals to get transmitted much faster. So our nervous system is divided up into the central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system. Our central nervous system is our brain and our spinal cord. Our central nervous system uh, receives information from the peripheral nervous system which is our which consists our extremities literally all the rest the whole rest of the body except the brain and the spinal cord uh, has the peripheral nervous system. So our central nervous system receives information from this peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system interprets the information and sends out or elicits a response. Now reflex arcs work a little bit differently. A reflex arc uh, results in an automatic or automated response. How it works is we receive sensory input. For example, if we touch something uh, without knowing that it's sharp, we always draw back before we realize that the object we touched is sharp. That is a reflex arc and how it works is the sensory input that you received from the stimuli actually the, the, neuro, the nerve impulse sends signals to the muscles to pull away before the nerve impulse has traveled to the brain which interprets the information and makes you realize that you've actually touched something sharp. This is completely automated, you have no control over it um, and it's actually an ingenious way of protecting your body. So let's take a look at some synapses and how they work. Alright, so here we've got a, the structure of a synapse. Now a synapse is, or a synaptic terminal is part of a synapse and that it is a specialized site where the neuron communicates with another cell, for example another uh, neuron or a effector uh, cell. So here we've got our telodendron which we saw in the previous uh, diagram. Um, this is our synaptic terminal. Inside we've got mitochondria and endoplasm reticulum. Um, the green dots that you see here or bubbles are the synaptic vesicles and they contain uh, our neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters 
uh, the release thereof is, of, is triggered by electrical events such as the arrival of an action potential. The neurotransmitters then flood the synaptic cleft and affect the activity of the postsynaptic cell, thus producing a response. The synaptic vesicles, vesicles will release the neurotransmitters, uh, which will cross the presynaptic membrane, cross the synaptic cleft, and cross over to the postsynaptic membrane. This way, neural impulses can be uh, transferred from one cell to the next. So we have receptors that help us detect certain stimuli. Now these receptors are usually found in sensory organs such as our tongue. Our tongue is a sensory organ and it contains a taste buds which taste buds which contain the sensory or receptor cells. Let's take a look at the structure of the eye and how things in the eye work. All right, so here we've got our structure of the eye. This is a horizontal dissection of the eye. Um, let's start here. We have our cornea, which uh, is the outer protective covering of the eye. Uh, next, we have our iris, which gives the color to our eyes. For example, green, blue, yellow. Um, next we have our suspensory ligaments and they hold the lens which you can see over here and um, we've also got our conjunctiva uh, over here um, our sclera makes up the white of our eye and underneath the sclera we've got a highly vascular layer which is called the choroid and the choroid uh, contains all the blood supply and thus um, this is where oxygen and nutrients uh, are allowed to enter the eye and supply the surrounding tissues with uh, certain nutrients that they require. Uh, beneath the choroid we've got our retina. Now the retina is where our rods and our cones are housed which are the cells that detect light and detect color. Rods detect light and cones detect colors. Um, this is our, the posterior cavity of the eye. Uh, the anterior cavity over here is divided into the posterior chamber and anterior chamber. Now don't get confused between chambers and cavities. There's anterior cavity and a posterior cavity. And the anterior cavity is divided into our uh, two chambers. Um, right at the back of the eye we've got the fovea which is a, a section of the eye that contains a highly concentrated amount of cones and this is where light will be focused on this area um, so the lens and uh, the the ciliary processes will uh, change the lens in such a way that light falls on mostly on this spot I'm um, talking about the ciliary processes they are over here and they also um, hold our lens and change the shape of our lens. This is the ciliary body. Um, next we've got our optic disc which is right over there and this is our optic nerve which goes to the brain which interprets the information that enter the eye and produces a picture uh, that we see. So here you can see how the ciliary muscle contracts or relaxes uh, for this certain uh, distances of focus. So if we have an object close to our eye, the lens becomes rounded. The muscle contracts and changes the shape of the lens so it becomes more round to allow the light to hit this focal point on our fovea. If we're looking at something far away from us, our ciliary muscles relax and this flattens the lens um, which allows light to hit the same spot our fovea and that's why it's important when you sit at a desk and work to every now and again look up from your work and look at something a bit further away from you uh, this relaxes the ciliary muscle and can actually help to prevent headaches note that you actually have a blind spot in your eye and that is where the the nerve uh, enters the eye go do that exercise in your book it's pretty cool actually so our endocrine system is another way that our body sends information to other parts or distant parts of our body. For example, our brain 
will release chemicals and these chemicals are called hormones and these hormones will go to for example our adrenal glands and our adrenal glands will respond by producing a hormone called adrenaline now you might have heard of this hormone before adrenaline is what gets your heart pumping what makes your muscles ready for action um, how it works is adrenaline because of the increased heart rate there's increased oxygen output to your muscles and to your brain and because of this increased oxygen output you become energized and you become ready for action basically adrenaline also increases your respiratory rate which is your breathing this further increases oxygen in the body which makes you get makes you ready for your fight and flight response now it's important to note that the endocrine system works by producing hormones in endocrine glands and these glands are ductless glands because they do not secrete well, the, pro the product that they make out into a duct they secrete the product directly into the bloodstream and the product which is the hormone travels in the bloodstream to various parts of the body and it will um, target the specific site where the hormone will produce a response now let's take a look at the coordination and response in plants so how do plants know which way to grow how do they know how to grow up if you throw a seed in the soil and it starts to sprout how does the leaves know how to go up and the roots know how to go down well there's two factors that come into play we've got light and gravity and the response due to light is called phototropism and the response uh, brought on by gravity is called gravitoprism so shoots will always grow towards the light and roots will always grow away from the light source so even though the seed is underneath in the soil it can still sort of sense that there's a light coming from above and dark it's more dark towards the bottom so that way it sort of all like coordinates itself and grows in the right direction another factor gravity also uh, helps with the plant orientating itself if you will um, because there's a pull of gravity from down below the roots will always grow towards the source of gravity and the shoots will always grow away there's another factor that comes into play to help a plant grow in certain directions this is a hormone and it's called auxin and this hormone is produced at the tip of the plant so where the, the shoots are, are growing the, it gets produced there and it, it results in the cells just behind the tip in the stem to actually elongate and this speeds up growth substantially now auxin actually helps the plant grow towards light how this works is if this is our light source on one side and this is our plant our plant will want to grow towards the light because it needs light to uh, photosynthesize so auxin will cause the cells on this side of the plant to elongate and thus pushing the plant towards the light source lastly if you've ever moved something out in your yard and you notice that there's some grass growing beneath it and it actually like looks kind of yellow this is called etodiation and this is because the plant did not get adequate sunlight and thus the chloroplast which is the green pigment the green pigment gives the color to the plant these did not develop all right well i hope you enjoyed today's lesson let's quickly go take a look at a few multiple choice questions so question 25 the diagram shows a section through the human eye uh, good color vision is a result of a high concentration of which type of cells at what position well the type of cells in our eye is our rods and our cones we know rods detect light and cones detect color if you remember that uh, we've got this point in our eye there where the indentation is and that is called the fovea and the fovea is highest in cones and cones detect color all right so the diagram shows seedlings in two experiments on the tropic response of seedlings to gravity and light so in experiment one we look at the effect of gravity and in experiment two we look at the effect of light so let's take a look at experiment one so at the start there's the shoot and we've got our little root 
Three days later, the chute started growing up away from gravity, the gravitational pull, and the root grew towards the pull of gravity, which would obviously be from the bottom. Thus, this uh, in experiment one, the chute responded to uh, gravitation. In experiment two, we look at the effect of light. So, um, at the start of the experiment, this is what we, the, how it looks, and at day three uh, because the light was shining from this side the chute grew towards the light source thus the chute responded to the stimuli which was the light so we are asked how this have the seedlings responded did they respond to gravity and did it respond to light so a tick mark shows the tropic response shown and a cross shows no tropic response so we we did see a response to gravity and we did see a response to light all right so when the nervous system responds to a stimulus there are several stages to the response so we we are given the certain stages but they're not in the correct order. It, the question asks us what is the correct order of the stages. So the stages are the central nervous system processes the info, the receptors detect the stimulus, a nerve impulse is sent to the central nervous system, a response is produced, a nerve impulse is sent to the muscles. So you can see that these aren't in the correct order. So what happens first when the nervous system responds to a stimulus? Well, first, the receptors have to detect the stimulus. There has to be detection of the stimulus. Uh, secondly, the, this, uh, the, the nerves, the neurons need to send this to the central nervous system. So a nerve impulse is sent to the central nervous system. Then the central nervous system processes the information. It figures out what's going on. Then a nerve impulse is sent to the muscles and finally the response is carried out by the muscles thus a response is produced this corresponds with a well that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this lesson good luck with the studying and go and get those good ones